On the 10th of April 1912, the Titanic, the largest passenger liner built at that time, was launched on her maiden voyage. From 9pm on the 12th of April, she was warned of pack ice and icebergs. What followed, to quote the Consul General in New York, was a harrowing story, even in its bare outlines, that when examined, the details are almost too awful to record. There were commissions of inquiry into the disaster held in both Great Britain and America. The information and testimony provided at the British inquiry were recorded and are now held at the National Archives. At 23.40, Titanic collided with a fateful iceberg. There were 2,228 passengers and crew on board. Passenger lists can be found in BT27-780B and BT27-776-2. All BT27 records can be accessed by name, ship, port of departure and destination at ancestorsonboard.com. As the iceberg hit, the hull was damaged and Titanic started taking on water. By 12.15, the Titanic's wireless operator, Jack Phillips, sent the first distress signals. A constant stream of messages was sent and picked up by nearby ships and at Cape Race in Newfoundland. However, the wireless operators on what was possibly the nearest ship, the SS California, did not work through the night and the radios were switched off. This lack of communication potentially resulted in a much higher loss of life. Copies of the telegrams which were received by SS Birma were presented to the Board of Trade Inquiry and can now be found within the MT9-920 files. By 12.45, Phillips started using the SOS distress call, the first time for a passenger liner. By 1.35am, the engine room was flooding. At 1.40am, the Titanic was sinking fast, passengers being put into boats. Current regulations require that vessels over 10,000 tonnes carried 16 lifeboats. The Titanic was actually carrying above regulations with 20. This was still only enough for 1,178 passengers. At first there was reluctance on the part of the passengers to leave, so many of the boats initially launched were only half full. Phillips remained at his post until the end. A half-cent message was picked up at 2.17, three minutes before Titanic is officially recorded as having foundered. At 4.10am, the first lifeboat was picked up by SS Carpathia, who, as the nearest ship to Titanic, had steamed her way through the night to come to the rescue. The National Archives has photographs taken from the Carpathia, including images of the rescued lifeboats. In the following three days that it took for the Carpathia to arrive back in New York, differing reports of what had happened were being reported back to White Star Line offices and to the press. At one point, there was no expected loss of life. Another report claimed everyone was safe, and a third that Titanic was being towed into port. However, only a little over 700 passengers were rescued. The Board of Trade Inquiry listed 703 survivors, but this is now disputed and is likely to be 711. The Register of Deceased Passengers, BT 334-52, 1912 to 1913, lists the names of those passengers who perished in the bitterly cold sea. The inquiry concluded that the disaster had been caused by excessive speed and a failure to maintain proper watch. It also brought about many changes, including the provision of enough lifeboats for all passengers on board and the 24-hour operation of radio communications on passenger ships to prevent distress signals being missed. For a complete guide to the records we hold on the Titanic, see our in-depth research guide at nationalarchives.gov.uk. You can also explore other web resources including encyclopedia-titanica.org and titaniquinquiry.org.